Hey everybody and welcome to today's show, the Tips Tuesday is here. Yeah, so today we're going to be having a really interesting topic and we're going to be addressing tell us about your weakness. And as usual, welcome to the Gina Mugai show. This is the place where you come to get inspired, you come to get uh, ideas, you get to provide you with tools, resources, and muscle connections so that you can be able to not only dream big, but also achieve your goals. So today's show is going to be very good. We are going to talk about how to answer what are your weaknesses and more so figure out how to um, how to be able to figure out what your weakness is and as usual as we always do every tuesday we are going to share within two minutes we need to just get in there and share the video is going to be pretty sharp so let's share real quick so that we can invite other people uh, who also wanted to join us today okay so i am going to go in there and share really quick i see some people have already joined in to welcome and i'm excited that you guys are here so let's share and within one minute we're gonna get into the details of it okay so just hit the share button i see hector is already here hi hector thank you for tuning in um and then we are gonna start right away so two minutes one minute to share invite other people as usual i get so many people who ask me oh gina let me know when you are live uh let me please know when you are here so that we can tune in so i'm gonna tag them real quick within a few minutes and then we are gonna get into the details of it and so for those who are continually joining very much welcome to the gina Guy show so today we are going to be talking tell us about your weakness how do you answer that uh, how do you answer that question when you are asked on the interview because it sounds like a lose-lose type of a question where whatever you say will not be good enough anyway so that is what I'm going to be trying to I will be training you guys today and from today once you get how to answer it it should never be a problem to you ever again I hope that it will not be at all okay and so uh, let's start in one second now uh, okay all right so tell us about your weakness that is the big question that we are dealing with today for those who are joining us very much welcome we're excited that you are here and you can go ahead and share invite your friends to join in um share with other people it is pretty important if you provide this information for free i give it to you for free it is only fair if you share it for free i see tabi is here and benjamin thank you guys so today we're going to be talking about how do you answer tell us about your weakness this is a very um you know daunting type of a question because in every interview that you will go to they will kind of ask you this question and it sounds like there's not going to be a right answer it sounds like a lose-lose type of a question like whatever you say is going to be working against you and therefore today i'm going to be training you how to perfectly answer it so that whatever you answer or whatever you provide the recruiters the hiring managers the interviewer with they will feel comfortable and they will be able to work with it and hire you because remember as usual there's not at any point that there can be that no one has a weakness we all do have weaknesses but then it's about how we present this so before we get started i want us to first figure out um what the, the weakness is not when it comes to job concept remember this is in an interview type of a setup and everything you need to tailor it towards the job that you are trying to seek and therefore when it comes to job when they ask you what is a weakness there are things that it is not and that is what i'm gonna go ahead and start with what do they mean and what is what is the weakness we want to understand first what it's not that way we can be able to easily understand what it is and so number one and this is uh, one of the major things that people make a mistake on number one of what a weakness in an interview is not it is not uh it, it it's not like um it's not a price it's not a strength in disguise a lot of people have been going out there trying to teach people that your weakness is like your strength in disguise you know when you are talking about things like oh i am a perfectionist and then you turn it around because you want the recruiter to feel like oh when she gets hired here she's going to be a perfectionist or i am a workaholic all of that that is not what they look for that is not the weakness that they look for and therefore it is not a strength in disguise okay and then another thing that is not it is not a personal trait remember when you are doing um when you are getting to get hired or whatever job you are doing you're working at 
there are things that they will not want to have to deal with each and every day and when your weakness is a personal trait when it's part of you when it's in, in the core of your being is not something the recruiter is willing to work with because that means they cannot do anything to change it so as we get started we have cleared the air that a weakness is not a, a strength in disguise a lot of people have been talking about that trying to tell people that it is but it's not Trust me, all the recruiters have heard, we have heard this so many times, we have had to deal with the same narrative, everyone is, I'm a perfectionist, I'm this and that, and it's not, and I'm going to teach you what it is. It's not, a, it's not a strength in disguise. Number two, it is not something that is inherent, it is not your personality trait, it is not something that cannot be fixed. Uh, and by personality trait, I talk about... Um, I mean something like uh, I am quick to anger or I am very impatient or I react whenever provoked things like that those are not what we want to talk about when it comes to the weaknesses okay I see more people are joining in welcome to the Jinami guys show I am glad that you guys are here and today we are talking about the weaknesses if you want I want you guys um to go ahead if you think you want me to tell you how to answer your weakness whatever you think your weakness is type it in there and i'm gonna uh, explain to you how to answer it correctly and if you guys can hear me clearly today i want you guys to hit the thumbs up i want you guys to get engaged and i want you guys to be uh, showing me that love because i'm here like talking all by myself i want you guys to hit the thumbs up and i want to feel engaged with you so what is a weakness because we have identified it's not a, a strength in disguise and it's not a personal trait it is not your inherent uh, uh, weakness what do they want to hear what is that so when it comes to uh, to answering what a weakness is in a job interview this is what they look for you want to make your weakness to be um, an issue that occurs in certain situations okay what do I mean by that if you guys can hear me hit the thumbs up I, I see many people but i don't see the thumbs up just hit it up for me <laughs> yeah so when you when you go for the interview and they ask you what your weakness is i want you to remember that it's not your personal trait personality trait and it's not a weak uh, a strength in this guys it is just nothing but an issue that occurs in certain situations okay and i'm gonna explain to you more what i mean by something that occurs in certain situations so for instance uh let's say someone can be uh, what is your weakness and they say impatience okay if your weakness is impatient the recruiter's mind will just take it like you are the type of people who are really not easy to work with because you are not patient your impatience is going to lead you to making overwhelming decisions react quickly be reactive instead of um responsive and therefore instead of saying i am uh, impatient you turn it around to not sound like because that no one can turn you into being not into, into becoming patient if you are the impatient type and therefore you don't just go and spill it up like i am impatient no one is able to change that maybe even yourself you would like to be patient and you cannot change yourself so no one gonna hurt you if you have that and so therefore instead of saying i am impatient how you put it is that um Remember the previous videos that I have done to you, with you guys, I always remind you that whenever you go for an interview, you go and you use your stories. Facts just tell and stories sell. So I want you to, even when you're answering this question, and this happens to all questions that I train you guys on, always use a story to answer the question. So even when they ask you what your weakness is, don't just say, I'm impatient. Okay, we want to develop a story around it and we don't want to use the name, I am impatient because it's going to get them, um, you know judging you too quick and not even wanting to engage with you so when it comes to something like i am impatient how do you answer that let's say genuinely you are, you, your weakness is that you are impatient okay for instance in my previous job in, in one of my job i had i realized that i had a weakness with spending a lot of time talking about petty stuff like wasting time like things that are taking us nowhere talking about dogs breeds and all of that so i cannot just go and say um I hate working with people who talk petty stuff or you know something like that so how you answer it you create it to be something more constructive because they can know they can see through your lie of saying oh I'm a perfectionist because I can make everything work pretty perfectly and that is my weakness that does not work and so how you put it when you are let's say impatient you create a story about what 
what brings that issue or what resurfaces or surfaces that issue so that it occurs in certain situations. It's not your day-to-day -day type of life. You are not inherently impatient. You are not easy. Uh, you're not the type of a person who will be impatient in everything that they do, but it just kind of happens here and there. So how do you answer that? You could put it in a way that, remember, we're using a story. You can create something like, oh, um, from my previous jobs, uh, I have realized that when I am working with, pe uh, with people or with team members who tend to take too much time before they deliver or who tend to take so much time before they are able to complete their task, I tend to go and check on them pretty oftenly. Like I feel the desire to go and check on them pretty oftenly. And when I do that, they end up feeling like I am micromanaging them or I am not giving them enough time. After I realized that, what I decided to do is to set up time ahead of time. I mean, to set up meetings ahead of time before we get started with the project. So uh, whenever we go ahead to get, uh, whenever we are getting uh, to start with the project, I set up time ahead of time. I set in our schedule ahead of time when we will need, we will need to meet and address and, uh, you know, update each other on the progress. And that way, after we provide that data, I don't have to go checking on them every time. Okay. Or if you're a manager, if you're a leader, let's say i'm a project manager myself and i am working with a team that is sloppy and slack and since i follow them too much they feel like i am you know breathing down their necks i am controlling or i am uh, micromanaging them all of these negative stuff so if i go to that interview i cannot go and say i am um, i micromanage and um, uh, i'm more like a control freak with my team members you cannot say that even if that is what they feel like so what you do you express it in a situation that makes you come out like you are a control freak or you are micromanaging and then you explain what you have done or what you are doing to improve and move out of that situation you don't leave it like that like oh they think i am micromanaging or uh, i breathe down the annex right so after you explain that then you take them to what you are doing to improve on that same situation because you don't want to leave it at that point okay I hope you guys, we are together and we can hit the thumbs up if we are or say yes, we are together. So whenever you provide them with that answer, for instance, I will repeat it as myself. I'm a project manager. I have a team of people who don't feel really committed. I don't, you know, I can tell that they are slacking. And if I don't follow up with them, they will have to make my project uh, get delivered late. And I don't want that. So what do I do? I kind of have to manage them. I kind of have to check with them every time now and then. And therefore, they end up feeling like I am micromanaging them. I'm not, um, I'm not giving them room to breathe. And therefore, when I go for my interview, I'm not going to say that I don't, I don't give people room to breathe. I micromanage people. I'm controlling and I am pushy. You don't say that. So I will be like, oh, after working in certain projects uh, in my previous job, I came to realize that most of my team members thought that I was uh, being a little... I was micromanaging a little bit and therefore I realized there was this was because I was working on a time sensitive project and therefore I needed to make sure that they deliver or they complete their task on time and I needed to kind of check on them every now and then as a result they felt like I was micromanaging them and after realizing that I came up with a schedule and a plan where before we get started with uh, any project we set up time to meet already uh, ahead of time so that they know every Friday at 3 p.m we're going to meet at the boardroom and they're going to provide me with the updates and the progress of the project okay so when you put it like that it makes now the recruiter not feel like uh this weakness of micromanaging i'm not like a misdo at all like i am doing quite a lot like i feel i am the best and all of that i'm just showing them like whenever there is pressure on a project that needs to be delivered ahead of time or on time i kind of have to check on it and then i realize that makes my team feel this way and therefore i am fixing it by coming up with the plan okay for instance, let's say you are in medical field. Anyone who is in medical field right here, uh, let's say your weakness is when a patient dies, you you crash, it crashes you. You're a human being, even if you're medically trained. Maybe you feel pretty crushed and you feel like you cannot work. Maybe you had a you know tight connection with that patient. So when they ask you about your weakness, don't say that. Um, whenever I lose my patient, I just cannot function. 
right because that is that is gonna affect the core of your work when you give your weakness you don't want it to keep you know to affect the core of your work the reason that they are gonna be hiring you if they are hiring you as a medical practitioner then you need to be the one who's gonna remain strong so if your weakness is um you know crumbling whenever someone dies you don't go and spit it out like when someone dies i just cannot function all that day that day okay so you can put it like something like um in my previous job i have worked with many uh, patients or even in my current position i have worked with many patients and i realized that whenever i lose a patient because i am the type of a practitioner who um invest a lot of uh, love and care and one-on-one -on -one, build a one-on-one -on -one relationship with my patients and then i realize whenever i lose a patient i feel i tend to spend so much time with the family consoling them uh being there for them and i end up wasting a lot of time while i am scheduled to do other things after i realized that so what i started doing is to make sure that whenever i lose a patient i give them enough time uh, talk with them console them and be there for them but then i time myself after after 30 minutes I have to go and see other patients and therefore I set an alarm or a timer to remind me that it's 30 minutes and therefore I need to go and be with other patients or with other people and I let them know remember you want to assure them that you are still providing care and I let that family know I let them know where I will be and I assure them that whenever they will need me they can come and get me from wherever I will be okay so it shows that you do not crush that you cannot function as a nurse as a provider Whenever a patient, die, a patient dies, you are still there for them. And your problem is not just being too compassionate. You are compassionate, that's why you're spending much time with them. But then you are, you don't want to seem like you cannot function because you're too compassionate because that is now a strength in disguise, which I told you guys don't do that. We, we kind of can see through that. That's straight up a lie. Okay? I, I hope you guys can hear me. Please hit the thumbs up if you can hear me. And therefore, don't do that. Just be very straight. If you're not, uh, if you are an accountant, for instance, um, or maybe in finance, do not use a weakness that is in the core of your in the core of your career. If you're an accountant and you and you just do a lot of typos, you're slack with numbers, or you're in finance, don't go saying like, oh hey, uh, my weakness is that um, I do a lot of typos or I make many mistakes to a point where I typed. Um, I was typing a twenty thousand dollar invoice and I ended up typing two hundred thousand dollar invoice. You know, you don't talk about that. So if your weakness is numbers, you can turn it into something like, um, as an accountant, I do understand how important it is for me to be accurate or as a financial guy, uh, accuracy is very important. And for me to make sure that I do not submit reports or statements or um, I don't deliver numbers that are not accurate. What I do, I counter check like three to four times. And I, if I am delivering my project tomorrow, I came to realize if I deliver the same day, there could be room for mistake or typos or errors. And therefore, what I do, I sleep, I finish my work like today, and then the following day, early in the morning, when my brain is sharp and I'm very fresh, I come and go through the same numbers to just counter check and be sure that the numbers are accurate okay so don't go saying like oh i do typos i send invoices to the wrong people i offend vendors no you do not say something like that okay i hope you guys are getting me i hope we are together and therefore in every weakness you are going to be addressing think about it as it has not to be in the core of your career if you're in medis medical field, don't say you confuse medications and you can give someone medication that don't belong to them. That is a life and death, <laughs> you know. If you're in accounting, you don't confuse, you don't mess up with numbers. Like uh, you, you, your mistake can cost the company billions of lawsuits and everything. If you are in law. You know, don't say you don't like memorizing articles. That is your job. If you're in sales and marketing, don't be like, I am timid and I am uh, introverted. Come on now. If you're in data science, if you are in coding, you can say you're introverted and it's going to be okay. But if you're in sales and marketing, no matter if, even if you're just, you don't like people, you don't like being around people, don't go talking about that. Just put your weakness to be like, um, 
I came to learn that when I am with people, sometimes I get a little intimidated and then as a result, what I did, I decided that every lunchtime I will be having lunch with different team members, interacting with them and talking with them. As a result, remember you have to provide the results of your weakness, you don't leave it at that. As a result, I have come to understand more uh, how many people work, how they have taught me new skills, I have become more extroverted and now I am even loving better working with people than working with computers. Okay, I am personally a trained accountant, but then I realized I cannot do account. I cannot be by a computer. I want to be with people. I want to, you know, hang out and catch up and talk and chit chat. And I want to be just all over, you know, in the organization, not being stuck in a cubicle. So be truthful to yourself at the same time, because that is the only way to go. Okay, I see you guys have commented oh hi Liz hi Joji hi Winnie I see y'all here together so anyone if you guys can get me hit me your thumbs up just let me know we are together so the good things to remember do not make your weakness sound like something that can never be fixed don't don't because if you know some people when I help a lot of people in getting their dream jobs and I will ask them this question to kind of just be sure they kind of understand where we are and they give me answers and I have to deprogram their mind like you cannot talk about that no matter what you can never say that is your weakness you can never address that what we need to do is like to reprogram your mind take that out because if you tell me that I'm not hiring you you know because if it makes me feel some of the weaknesses, like telling me I am a workaholic, that's fabricated lies. That is what you get on Google every day. And if you are giving me, uh, someone told me like, um, I hate cheap talks and most people in the offices are, are shallow and stuff like that. And that is true. I also, I just cannot stand shallow talks in office. It's, it just gets into me. You know, I, I cannot sit down and discuss about weather for 30 minutes. Like, how about we talk about the future of Bitcoin or something like that? But then you don't go talking about that. If you put it that way, they will see you are so full of yourself. You think you're smart. You are everything that no one wants to be around. And therefore, you kind of have to mitigate it. Okay? Uh, Liz, come on, Gina. Are you hiring? I'm looking for a job. <laughs> Liz, I cannot hire you because I just made your resume and I think you need to go to Google. <laughs> Not a free mentor for now. Okay. And therefore, just don't fabricate your answer. Be very genuine. And how do you get to know what your weakness is? Now, this is the second part and this is going to be very brief. How do you know... Um, that you are weak what to tell them what do you how do you figure out your weakness this is how you do it you sit down and look at the things that assess the situations that make you feel like you're trying you're getting tipped at work okay for me it's getting my my, my team members delivery uh like late if you're not on time i just hate when i email somebody and they don't email back no matter what it is just just send like i got it or oh, okay or oh, received just don't don't not re respond to me okay when i am in the office early in the morning please don't come talking to me about the snow and the dog and the trump and everything those are my productive hours in the morning i just want to be shut in my in my workplace and grinding so hard right so when you know your weaknesses then write them down whatever tips you okay out of the four weaknesses then look which one is not deeply affecting your core of your career depending on what career field if you're an engineer like let's say to be here if you're in engineering don't go talking about how you hate you know working with tools or working with a lot of men around you because you're the only girl in a team of 20 that will affect your career and they will know every day you go to work you don't like your job you don't like the people you are with don't talk about stuff like that look at a weakness that is not affecting the core of your career and then when you look into those four then assess and build a story around it in every weakness give it as an example remember you have to address uh, address it like something outside of you like for me i will say oh my coworkers said or my colleagues said that um I tend to manage them very closely that makes them feel uncomfortable or micromanage or not trusted or that I don't give them space. So it's not something like, oh, I know I am bad in micromanaging. That is, in, if I say it that way, it sounds like they will need to draw blood out of me, take it to the lab and pick those cells that, you know, that are called micromanaging cells and then put it back. And that is not possible. No one can fix your weakness, sometimes not even yourself. And therefore make it simple for them. Don't make them feel like it's too much 
address the weakness that is not inter it's not gonna affect the core of your work secondly mention it in a light note like i have observed that it's not like he's in my dna i knew that before i was even born no and then after that come up with a way on how you're working on it and mitigating it and the result of what you are doing as a result um I have come to understand that it's easier if I prepare my schedule ahead of time, get to pe people to know every Friday we meet, they provide me with updates and if I have a question they let me know and they also understand every time I send you an email, you kind of have to respond to it even if it is not just for you reading it, just respond by saying something even if it's a one word, okay? So I hope you guys that was helpful and informative to y'all, it was good to have you guys here today. I am thankful for tuning in. Next Tuesday, I'm going to have a really good topic that is going to move your career to the next level. I'm always happy to have you guys. And therefore, for today, I wish you the very best. It was nice being with you. I see you. Uh, I cannot pronounce your name. <laughs> and I will be seeing you guys soon. Remember to share. If you want to see other videos that I have done, especially on these topics about career and business, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube. It's called Gina Mugai Show. The Gina Mugai show on YouTube or Gina Mugai, you will see me on YouTube. And then on this page, you can also find them somewhere seating the videos. They I leave them here for all of you guys to access. And also remember to share with other people. I provide you this information for free. The best thing that you can do is to give it for free. Remember, the hand that gives is better. Okay, so guys, see you next week and have a beautiful Tuesday. Bye.